Hello guys, in this video we will talk about something called as SVM soft margin. I will give you an in-depth intuition on the math behind it, how it works. Okay, so this video is also going to be very important uh, as of hard margin. Uh, please watch this till the end. Uh, it won't be as long a video as of hard margin because we already know most of the things as how SVM works. Okay, so let's get started. So guys, uh, we already know from uh, if you have seen my hard margin SVM video, SVM in general actually tries to find out these three hyperplanes here, pi, pi plus and pi minus and this is how it wants the data to be perfectly linear separable and these things are our hyperplanes. This is pi plus, this is pi, mi pi and this is pi minus, okay and these data points on these hyperplanes are called as support vectors, correct, support vectors. Now, the problem with hard margin is it actually works only when this particular constraint is satisfied. And what is this particular constraint? None of the data points belonging to positive class should be below this particular hyperplane pi plus. And in the same way, none of the data points belonging to negative class should be above this hyperplane pi minus. If at all there are any points violating this constraint, this will not be true and so SVM hard margin fails, okay, SVM hard margin fails and because of this in almost all the real world applications this hard margin is never used, why? Because in real world scenario we will not have the data points which is perfectly linearly separable like in this case as you can see in this figure here, right. So, what kinds of uh, data we will have? We will have either almost linearly separable. Uh, when I say almost linearly separable, one or two data points overlapping here, here and there. Okay. So, this will be the case or else the most worst case will be non-linearly separable. So, the data points could look something like this. So, if you think these as negative data points and positive data points would be somewhere here. Okay, so this is not a linearly separable data point, right? So, in order to separate this perfectly, SVM has to find out the decision boundary something like this, which is not possible in case of hard margin because hard margin only works when we have perfectly linearly separable data. Okay, so this is the main constraint and main drawback. So, in order to overcome this, what we will do, we will introduce something called as soft margin. So, in short, with soft margin, we are going to give some relaxation on this particular constraint. Okay. And by giving the relaxation, what I mean, we will allow for some misclassification to happen. We will allow some misclassification to happen. Okay. So, when I say misclassification, there could be overlaps. So, some of the negative data points could be here or even they could be here and some of the similarly some of the positive data points could be here or they could be here okay so this relaxation we will give and we call it as soft margin and when i say misclassification there could be two types of misclassification okay so let me just write it here two types of misclassification so for this purpose we will consider these these three uh, these three hyperplanes only because SVM generalizes this on everything uh, whether it's a hard margin or soft margin okay so let me just have this figure here again and let me clean it up so right now i do not want it here okay so the first type of misclassification would be uh, the data point is on the wrong side of the decision boundary but on the right side of the margin correct side of the margin so let me just write it data point is on the wrong side of decision boundary but on correct side of the margin correct side of the margin so what do i mean by this so for example let's take this negative data point and let's say we have a data point here okay so 
this is at the uh, what you what you can say uh, give me a second let me just remove that so let's take a negative data point here okay so this here is actually on the wrong side of the decision boundary so this is our decision boundary correct so the middle hyperplane is our decision boundary so this particular point is on the wrong side of the decision boundary but on the correct side of the margin so it is well below the positive hyperplane okay so this is one type of misclassification so the other type is the data point is on wrong side of the decision boundary and also wrong side on margin also okay so what do i mean by this so if we take the same negative data point one of the negative data points and let's say it is somewhere here right so this data point is on wrong side of the decision boundary and also on the wrong side of the margin correct so these are the two types of misclassifications that we can have so what we will do we will allow for these misclassifications by introducing a new variable called as slack variable slack variables and we will have these slack variables associated with each data points so for example let's say we have m training records m training records so we will have m slack variables associated with them okay so for each training record for each data point we will have a slack variable associated with it so what this slack variable does and by the way this is denoted with the help of uh, greek letter zeta so i don't know if i'm writing it correctly but this is how roughly it looks like so i'll write it also this is zeta okay so slack variables are denoted as zeta so what this slack variable actually is so this will obviously have some value associated with it okay so usually the value of this zeta okay zeta of i will be greater than or equal to 0 based on the class misclassification whether the data point is getting misclassified or not okay so now i will give you the values associated with slack variables so this zeta of i will be equal to 0 for correctly classified data points correctly classified data points which means the data points are on the right side of the decision boundary and also on the right side of the margin okay now this zeta value will be greater than 0 but less than 1 so in short we can write it as 0 less than zeta i less than 1 so this is the case when we have first type of misclassification for these kind of data points okay and for the second type of misclassification the zeta i value will be greater than 1 okay so this is what zeta value gives us and how you can interpret this zeta value so this is nothing but the distance from the actual hyperplane it is supposed it was supposed to be so for example uh, this particular negative data point here was supposed to be below this below this hyperplane right so this zeta value is nothing but the distance from this hyperplane how far it is so how far this data point has been misclassified from the respective hyperplane which it was supposed to be so that's the distance okay and similarly if we have some positive data point uh, shooting at this side here so the zeta value for this particular data point would be the distance of this data point from its respective hyperplane which is pi plus so that's what zeta value is actually okay now you can actually think of why this zeta value will be equal to 0 for misclassification and why it is less than 1 but greater than 0 for these kind of data points and why it will be greater than 1 for these kind of misclassified data points okay so what we will do uh, in case of our hard margin our goal was to goal was to maximize 2 over theta right so this is our margin or distance so i have also explained how do we arrive at this particular equation of the distance in my earlier video where i was explaining hard margin 
So if you are not aware of that, uh, I haven't seen that video, please go back and watch that video. You will get to know that. Okay. So now what we will do for the sake of uh, simplification in soft margin, we will just instead of maximizing this, we will minimize something else. So minimize reciprocal of this theta by 2. Okay. So if we are maximizing some function f of x, it's same as minimizing the inverse of it. Right. So or reciprocal of it. Instead of inverse, you can call it as reciprocal. Okay. So that's what I have done here. So instead of maximizing 2 over theta modulus of theta, we will minimize modulus of, modulus of theta by 2. Okay. So this is same as our hard margin. But in case of soft margin, since we have introduced slack variable, we will add that particular term. And we will have slack variable associated with each data point, right? So i is equal to 1 to m zeta of i. Okay. So this is our cost function for SVM soft margin. SVM as a soft margin classified. Okay. Now, this particular thing actually called as margin error. Okay. And this particular thing is classification error. Right. This is called as classification error. Why it is called, called as classification error? Because the value of zeta i actually depends on how largely the data point is misclassified. So that is why it is called as classification error. Right. So now we have something extra here called as a variable c and this here is actually a hyperparameter. Okay. So what is this c? I will tell you now. So what happens with this c? So this c actually helps in controlling the trade off between controls the trade off between this margin error and classification error so how i will explain that so for that i'll write this equation neatly again so it is minimize over theta and b because these are our parameters right so what we will minimize we will minimize modulus of theta by 2 plus c into summation of i is equal to 1 to m zeta of i right now this is our cost function for svm as a soft margin classified now coming to this particular c value so if it is equal to 0 this whole term will be equal to 0 and there is no point of introducing slack variable right so again we will go back to hard margin hard margin okay now if c is equal to 1 what we say we give equal importance to minimize the margin error and also to minimize the classification error so when i say to minimize the margin error and minimize the classification error so Indirectly, I am saying my SVM to keep this margin as large as possible, also keeping in mind to reduce this particular classification error. Okay. So, if you just think, think it through, setting this C is equal to 1, if the data is non-linearly separable, this will, this will never actually work. Right. So, what we have to do? we will give some value to c which will be greater than 1 or c less than 1 and not 0. Okay. So, now we will see these two scenarios, how this affects. So, if c is greater than 1, so let us say I am giving a value of 10 to c. So, what I am saying, if this is 10, I am giving more weight or I am concentrating more on reducing the misclassification error. So, in this case, I am concentrating more on misclassification error. Right? 
what do i mean by i am concentrating more on misclassification error i am actually i will be trying to minimize the classification error and i will not think much about this margin error okay so i do not mind even if the margin is small but i want to reduce the misclassification error by this particular factor 10 okay so this is when c is greater than 1 so what if c is let's say 0.2 or 0.5 something like this okay so what i am saying here do not worry much on concentrating to minimize the misclassification error but make sure you minimize this margin error so here i am concentrating more on concentrating more on margin error so when i say i am concentrating more on margin error i want the margin to be as large as possible so it could be this much big and i am okay to accept some of the misclassifications okay because i am not i am not giving much weightage to reduce this particular value here if c is set to such values 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.1 point is something like that okay so this is how c actually controls the trade off between margin error and misclassification error okay and this thing here theta uh, modulus of theta over 2 actually acts as a regularization factor okay so if you have seen my uh, videos on logistic regression regularization or linear regression regularization so you would understand why it is actually acting as regularization factor okay and this particular thing here uh, c summation of i is equal to 1 to m zeta of i this is actually called as hinge loss okay so in the end for svm in general it is implemented as the cost function for svm is so minimize sorry uh, the cost function j of theta comma b is given as theta over 2 models of theta over 2 plus c into i is equal to 1 to m zeta of i so this is our cost function and we have to minimize this our goal will be to minimize this minimize j theta comma b over theta comma b okay by modifying the values of theta comma b we will minimize this particular cost okay so hope this video is clear how uh, actually svm works behind the scenes in case of soft margin okay so so that's it for this video guys uh, hope you like the content and hope i am able to give you some intuition on how we are relaxing the constraint of, in the hard margin and achieving something called as soft margin svm classifier so if you like the content uh, please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe happy learning bye bye